What is up YouTube and welcome to this Snowpiercer Season 2 Episode 5 Breakdown, Review, Recap and Ending Explained. This was an intriguing episode where I expected a lot more after last week's filler, but sadly this episode didn't really get going until the last 5 minutes. It was all building to that final cliffhanger which itself was... Yeah, a bit of a letdown when I expected some massive train breach, but it didn't. However, alas, there's going to be a Melanie-centric episode next week, which really makes up for it. If you enjoyed the video, then please do drop a like down below and subscribe with notifications on to never miss a video. We open with Josie as she undergoes treatment for a frostbite, and it's evident that our boy Wilford has something up his sleeve, and I am sticking to my theory that he's making these icy people to take back the Snowpiercer as he freezes it and then gets them back, as that was signposted back in the first episode of this season. She's messaging the Snowpiercer as she lets later know that the Big Alice and Wilford are making a move as Icy Bob is being taken off Deep Freeze and prepare for a battle. But that never actually happened, and it looks like Wilford is using subterfuge and cloak and daggers. However, it all seems to be a misunderstanding based on the end of the episode. We then cut to Wilford who is pining over his love Audrey, and even has a vinyl of her music playing to the whole train. I love the fact that the whole train are there at the whim and will and fantasy and fancy of our boy Wilford as he's really missing his girlfriend or not girlfriend, whatever she is. I may have missed it when it was revealed how she was a famous singer before the big freeze and he's got the entire train reading a single book called Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. Funnily enough, the movie adaptation came out on Netflix last year starring the controversial possible cannibal army hammer yeah anyway i still really like the lone ranger and focuses around a woman falling in love with a wealthy widower the narrator is a woman who falls in love with a man called maxim whose wife died tragically whom well it was sort of self-defense as she was threatening his livelihood and the narrator stands by him despite his wife's housekeeper constantly working against her and eventually them. I have a full breakdown of that movie if you wanted to check it out on my channel and the movie is out on Netflix as well. I feel there is some parallels with some form of backstory of Wilford and Audrey here as the book club discusses it and is divided about the narrator being romantic or not, with Alex's mate being in the love camp, but hey, she's got someone in the works over there on Snowpiercer and it is the second to last Aussie alive. Now, Wilford then gets an invitation to send out to Audrey, clearly part of his plan to gaslight her further, as we saw the alarm at the end of the episode, and if he is indeed behind these murders, it is still a bit incredibly ambiguous, bit of a real oxymoron there, but I will get into that later in the video, and we see Josie on the train receiving her treatment, which is curious, and I wonder if they are attempting to turn her into an icy bob too. But she has a panic attack only for a surprise person to come to her aid in the form of Icy Bob, who tells her to calm down and teaches her how to manage the pain she's feeling. Of course, he is really versed in that pain. I thought it was corny when he was introduced, but he is indeed a cool character here, no pun intended, making him a sympathetic character, forced to be this way, but his mind is of sound mind, for lack of a better term again, and Josie needs all the help she can get. Leighton discusses the impending attack and wants to know which cars are vulnerable to attacks from the outside. But, well, Bessie is now unsure about the approach to keep the border open, and she's unsure soon of Leighton, and she's told to take a day off, but heck, she 100% needs it, you know. However, Ruth is furious at being kept out of the loop, but to be honest, if I was Leighton, personally, I wouldn't trust her, as she is a Wilford hire, thus loyal, but as a viewer, I do believe her to be lawful neutral, if anything, and she was urged to come over the train at the end but she did stay where she was because she is loyal to the train lj returns and attacks pike as he's chastised the moving product up train without terence's permission and the janitors here are a big big thing and terence's grisly fate this episode was to be honest long overdue 
and I expect a power vacuum with LG taking over. He breaks the info to Leighton, who later goes off to meet Terence, who threatens Josie in the episode, which is really ill-advised as we start to see the cold and calculating Leighton, as I expect he will morph into a Wilford-like figure, and Josie is integral to his plans. However, we saw Wilford meet her last episode, and I expect full save information is being drip-fed to her so he can know where it is actually coming from. Alex wants to know what Wilford is planning, but Wilford is like a giddy schoolboy as Audrey is preparing to visit and he's dressed up to meet his love who has fallen for his gaslighting again, except she hasn't at all. However, there is one major problem. Ben notices there has been no response or contact from Melanie, which is a huge problem. Although, let's remember what she said, the data is the success, not her survival. As we later learn, they are close to turning around and launching the final balloon but they can model the climate without her, so that is something to remember for next episode. Bessie is on her day off and chats to her old partner, but has then shown the boxing ring to let off some steam. She's a very interesting and layered character, but she is starting to question Leighton and the plans against Big Alice. Ruth, however, is deep down worried about Melanie, despite the deep betrayal she felt, and the whole train is waiting for Melanie as we have kids make a mural, which is a big thing, because in the movie, these kids are very much indoctrinated against anything else apart from Wilford's story. But having a mural about thanking Melanie... Well, that's a big thing, and the first-class people who are Wilford loyalists don't like it. Wilford and Audrey sit down, and while he goes off to pour some more drinks, she attempts to break into his safe, it seems, and at the end, she stays on Big Alice, but, well, Wilford did notice that she was doing something. It's evident she is not interested in him, but wanting to make sure he never hurts anyone again, in my opinion. We then see Pike and Leighton discuss what to do with Terence, and Leighton is hinting that Terence needs to die, but Pike is trying to redeem himself and become a better person and not killing out of combat. However, Leighton has gone beyond himself, and, well, without Melanie here to rein him in, it's evident that his feelings for Josie are causing this, and I can, well, imagine that they can make contact with Big Alice without that, as they have that Aussie chick there as well. Now, last season, and at the start of this season, he was wanting to help Pike change, and I saw this whole working for Leighton as part of that. However, he's going against his own morals, and this is something the priest hints at with him being the wrong leader, as I smell a power struggle between Bessie and Leighton coming. Now, Pike wants some semblance of honour from this and wants it to be combat, so he feels better, but when he faces Terence, it's just a weaselly guy against an outmatched physically person as Pike takes him out and later shaves his head, showing his mental decline. We then catch up with Josie, who is going through the procedure, but hears about the Breachman, and I got from this, based on the end, that they were going to use the Breachman to turn into Icy Bobs, but Wilford had other ideas and they were murdered, as Josie sends word down to be warned, but I did think it might be Bessie at first, or even Leighton organising the tale, but it's evident with the timing that Audrey was there, that it was simply a Wilford plot to make Audrey feel unsafe and make her stay with him. Overall, I enjoyed this episode a lot, and despite it being a slow burn, we have next week as a Melanie-focused episode as her presence is sorely missed from the show, and Sean Bean continues to be the best thing. Now, next week, we will hopefully see what she's been doing these past episodes, and it's going to be fun to see. But that's it for this video. Please drop a like down below. Please do subscribe with notifications on. We have more videos coming this week with WandaVision out on Friday. I will have my Superman and Lois video, hopefully on Thursday because I won't have time to do it tomorrow. So please do check that out and I'll see you soon and goodbye.